In this lesson, we're going to take a look at passing streams to functions. How do you pass streams to functions, and why would you pass streams to functions? First, there's one rule that we have to live by, and that is when you pass a stream, pass it as a reference. So if a stream is a parameter for a function, it has to be a reference parameter, and if we return a stream from the function, then it has to be returned by reference. Here's our first example. I've created a function called file open. It's a templated function that returns nothing. I've put it in its very own header file called fileopen.h. That way I can carry this from one project to another very easily. And its purpose is to pass a stream to the function and have the function connect the stream to a file. So take a look at the precondition. It says that the template parameter has to be of a specific kind. And this is very important. This simply won't work for just any old type. It has to work for IF stream and OF stream only types. Okay, let's take a look. First of all, what are the parameters? We're going to pass either an IF stream or an OF stream. And notice it is by reference. And we're going to pass a const string. I've called it prompt part because it's going to become part of the prompt that is contained within the body of the function. And it's a string. Max tries is a constant 5. Uh, that's simply going to be a limit on the number of times I get to try to do something. And if it fails, then we're just going to exit the program. Count keeps track of that number of times that it's tried. File name is a string, and it's going to hold the name of the file that is read in from the user. So we begin with a prompt. Enter name of prompt part. Okay, let's take a look at how this is going to be used. In fact, I have that on the next slide. So here's an example. Okay, I've created an input file stream, and I call file open passing the stream itself and the const literal, just a simple word, input. So if we go back and look at the code then, it'll say enter name of input file. That's the prompt. So the user inputs the name of the file, and we attempt to connect. If the connection is good, then file stream that's the name of that stream, will return true, not true is false, and we simply skip that loop. We return from the function, everything is good. But if file stream is false, the not false is true, and the body of the loop is executed. So we'll start by clearing the fail bit, so we can attempt again. Output an error message, prompt, read in the file name, attempt to connect, increment count, and then of course ask, is count greater than max tries? If it is, we send out an error message, and then exit. And this will loop until the connection is made. That way, we can't leave the execution of this function unless, one, we connect to the connect our stream to the file, or two, we simply fail five times and we're out of the way. Now here's a different kind of function. This is an example of operator overloading. Operators are functions. You may have figured that out. I may have said it in an earlier lesson. But an operator is a function. It's just a function with a little bit different format. So the less and less than the insertion operator is a binary function, just like plus equals minus. Those are all binary functions. They take two arguments to fill two parameters. With operators, we usually refer to the arguments as operands. But still, nonetheless, there are parameters for the function. Now, there are some differences between any old function and an operator. The first difference is, that's really noticeable, is the name of the function is operator and then whatever symbol it is that uh, designates that operation. So operator is a key word, a reserved word, and it becomes part of the name of every function that is an operator. The return type here is an O stream, and notice that it is a reference. We do this so that we can return the very same stream that we pass in. That way we can chain the operation, and I'll go into that in more detail here in a few minutes. So return type so stream reference, name is operator less and less than, the parameter list comprises of an O stream by reference, of course, we call it out, and a const point, and I called it P. Now, notice that it's a const reference. You might be thinking, if I made something reference, that indicates that I possibly want to change it. Yes, but in this case, I've made it constant. Now, why would I do such a thing? Why would you make something that you might want to change const? 
Well, here's the reason, and it's going to be very typical when you're using user-defined types, which point is it's a user-defined type. That was a struct, if you remember. So why would I do this? The reference will prevent the overhead of copying. If you don't have the reference, then it's passed by value, and the compiler has to copy that object. Now, with a point, it's not a big deal. It's two floats. It doesn't take much time or effort. But typically, user-defined types are very large, and copying takes a lot of time. If you can get around that, say, by pass by reference, then do so. But because you don't want to change this thing, you're just simply going to output it, you want to make it a const. So reference, because you save on overhead, const to protect yourself. This line of code is nothing but output formatting. I'm going to use the stream that I passed in, the usual meaning of the insertion operator, and then I'm going to output a parenthesis, the x, a comma, the y, and a parenthesis. And I'm going to return the very same stream that I passed in, and we'll see why that is true. Okay, for example, I create two points, p1 and p2, and I can see out p1. This will now compile. Prior to this, it wouldn't compile. The compiler had no idea how to stream a point. We needed to teach it, and we have done just that. Now look at the second line. C out, insertion, P1, insertion, uh, space, insertion, P2. I've chained that process. And we'll take a look how that process follows through. As a second example, I've created an output file stream, and I can use that to output P1 and P2. So C out, which is a output file, is an out stream, an O stream, and F out, which is an output file stream. There are two different types, but as it turns out, C out belongs to a class of objects that is kind of a mother class of the kind of objects that F out belongs to. In other words, F out is a file stream, an output file stream, and every output file stream is an out stream or an an O stream. So there is O stream and there is OF stream. But every OF stream is an O stream and C out belongs to the O streams. F out belongs to the OF stream. So anything that you can do with an O stream you can do with an OF stream. Okay, let's step through this. See how chaining works. We output P1. So it executes the overloaded operator less and less than and we return C out. That was this object that was passed in. Remember, this is a function. So C out is the argument that fills the left-hand parameter. P1 is the argument that fills the right-hand parameter of this function. It returns C out with the points data added to the stream. Great. That means that all of this returns C out which means what? I see out the space. That's the next thing. That returns C out, but with the space added to the stream. So, again, from what I've got here, I now have a C out, which then is going to operate with that streaming operator. So we see out P2, and that executes the overloaded operator less and less than, and that returns C out with the points data added to the stream. Now you might be thinking, what happens to that last C out? Absolutely nothing. And this points out a very important aspect about C++ and functions. You don't actually have to use the return value of a function. In this case, there's going to be a C out that's left. Let's go back and take a look at the code here. Okay, this will return C out. So I'm going to then C out the space, which will return a C out which will then output the P2, and that returns a C out, and that is just left. It's not used. One final note. IO stream and F stream are the same family. I explained this a minute ago. Every F stream is an IO stream. Get line, ignore, get, put back, etc. All those functions that we looked at earlier, they're good for file streams just as well. So, for example, you could use get with an input file stream. And that's the end of this session.